Hi, I'm Robert Hookman Jr. and I'm here with Dave Shea, the man behind the legendary CSS Zen Garden and the author of Zen of CSS Design, co-author with uh, co Miss Molly yeah. Holschlag. Welcome, Dave. Thank you very much. How are you enjoying South by Southwest? Wow, man, has it ever gotten big? <laughs> a little bit, I yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's big, it's crazy, it's great, I love it. It's, it's been a really great couple of days, actually. Fantastic. Yeah. I hear the, the attendance is something like double since last year? Uh, something like, yeah, 7,500 yeah, people? It's, it's huge. You know, I'm walking down hallways going, okay, I just passed 1,000 people and I don't recognize a single one. Right. Yeah, I've heard from several friends that, that they could walk around here for eight hours and not see a single person they know. You try finding a specific person that you actually want right. to find, it's, it's impossible. The thing that has surprised me, though, is that I keep continuously running into the same three people, <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Seems like everywhere I go, I'm passing them. It's like the cluster phenomenon or something. <laughs> It's excellent. So, uh, so what are you doing at South by this year? Um, I got a panel tomorrow coming up where I'm talking about uh, creative collaboration and going in and working with designers and developers on teams together. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a couple of people from Yahoo there, uh, a couple of XBBC folks, and uh, myself, who's an independent designer, working out of a room with no other people. So, mm. I'm not quite sure how to approach this one yet, but <laughs> it, it should be interesting anyway. But you know, other than that, just kind of uh, hanging out with the people that I only get to see once a year, going to the parties, and uh, um, catching some actually fairly good content this year. I've been really impressed by uh, the the presentations that I've seen. They've just seemed the quality may, may be a little better this year. Yeah, excellent. I've, I've been really happy with it myself as well. I think I've only uh, seen a couple questionable ones, but most of the con most of the panels have been fantastic this year. So. Um, so what do you think the keys are for getting designers and developers to work, uh, to play nice <laughs> together? Um, I think it's a mutual respect and a mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that has to be learned probably through experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to work on projects with people and just really get a sense for where they're coming from and why when they say something that makes no sense to you, why they're saying it and why it's important to them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think, I think being multi-talented also really helps having uh, at maybe not a working knowledge, maybe not being able to do it yourself, but at least understanding what is involved if you're a designer going into a situation where you're working with coders or vice versa. Yeah, I agree. There can be a lot of, there can be a big communication gap between yeah. designers and developers very, you, very You don't often. even speak the same language, right? Right, So exactly. you have to meet in the middle somehow, and that can be tough to do. It just yeah. comes with time. Yeah, and I don't necessarily believe that designers always have to have programming background or, pro or programmers should always have design experience, right. but, but at least you know a peripheral knowledge can definitely help a lot, close that communication. I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said that um, their analogy was that painting, you have to understand the pigments and the, uh, the, the watercolors if that's what you're using, you have to understand mm -hmm. the medium. And I think that kind of applies. You may not have to code, but you should at least understand it and understand what some of the constraints that code will impose on mm -hmm. the design work that you're doing. And some of the difficulties and challenges that go along with it. It can be, it can yeah. be a tricky business. Yeah, exactly. So tell me about, uh, about a Zen, the Zen of CSS design. Well, the book's been around for you know three or four years now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we published it back in 2004. And uh, it's, you know, we've been nothing but thrilled with the success. People are constantly referencing it, coming to us all the time, and thanking us for writing it, which is really kind of, it's, it's great to hear, you know, it's a really humbling experience when, you know, you have somebody in a classroom somewhere in, in a city that you've never been to before or even heard of saying, that was, that was the book that my instructor used in the class to teach us about web design. So mm -hmm. it's just been really fantastic, a great way to, uh, to meet people and see how people are actually implementing some of the principles in their own work and, yeah. and in uh, instructional situations. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so for those of us that don't know, those of our audience members that don't know about CSS and Garden, what is the uh, what is the core principle behind it? All right, so you've got you've got the single HTML file. It's it's one file. It has the same text in it, and that never changes. In the five years that it's been up there, it hasn't changed at all. Uh, what does change is this one little link to an external CSS file, and that's it. And by changing that one link, you can submit. Or I have had hundreds and hundreds of designers submit multiple designs based on entirely just the CSS and the images that go along with that, and it will update the HTML to be, you know, that same HTML file will be different designs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's there's hundreds if not thousands in there by now from designers all around the world. And it's, it's just been a way of proving to people that CSS is a very capable design language if you're using it properly. Mm -hmm. Five years ago when I created the site, that was really the big message that we had to get out there. And you know, these days I think a lot of people that are kind of, uh, they've been doing it for a long time, they understand that this is a case and it's not so useful as like a teaching tool for them, 
but there's still all that great design work going through it, so it's really inspirational. Mm -hmm. You know, you get fresh new ideas just by going to the site and seeing what the new designs are. Right. So has the message gotten out? I think so, but, you know... <laughs> CSS been, seems to be catching on a little I, bit these it, days. it has, and there are lots of sites that use it now, mm -hmm. but not everyone. Um, I'm constantly seeing, uh, like, maybe 30 designs will come in at a time from one particular IP range, which tells me right there, that's a school classroom, you know, that's, that's somebody <laughs> teaching their students, and their final project is create a Zen Garden design and then submit it. Right. And in a lot of cases, it's usually you get extra credit if it actually gets added to the uh -huh. site. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the new people that are learning, and there will always be new people learning. But there's also a lot of people that have been doing it for a long time that just haven't really had that need to upgrade their skills. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't been a push internally in their companies, or they're stuck using legacy systems. Uh, there's a lot of potential reasons. And I just know from talking to people that all the time, new people who have been doing it for a long time are stumbling across the site for the first time, really? even five years later. And you know, I can tell you that the traffic logs have remained consistent throughout the past five years. They haven't really changed. They've gone up in spikes here and there. They've gone down in spikes here and there. But it's it's been a very very steady plateau. So mm -hmm. people are still using it to this day. That's great. It's also been very very viral. It, it spreads yeah. so much by word of mouth. Yeah, exactly. I can tell you that a, a few years ago, when I first heard about CSS and I first started using CSS, that was the site that someone pointed me to. Right. So I went to it and checked it out, and suddenly, you know, saw the light. Yeah. Well, so, you know, uh, it's, be it's become kind of a touchstone site. You know, if you're doing mm -hmm. CSS design, at some point, you have to inevitably run across the site. Right. So if you're working with CSS, at some point you have to come across Dave <laughs> Shang. <laughs> yeah, I wish it were that easy. Unfortunately, I meet people all the time who go, I didn't know who created the site. Well, it's good to meet you. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I didn't publicize my name very well. Yeah, well, it's also kind of funny because sometimes I mention your name and everybody goes, oh, that guy. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. Right, right, right. So I guess it depends on what circles you're, you're hanging around yeah. with. If you're at South By, I bet and a lot of people know who you are. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, so uh, I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, but I've got to know. Um, what was the inspiration for, for CSS Zen Garden? Well, okay, so long story. I'll try to make it really quickly because I know we don't have a lot of time, but I was working for a small company and I was getting really frustrated by the limitations of supporting older browsers. Like Netscape 4 was still really um, in wide use in 2002, or maybe not wide use, but it was, you know, 10% of the population was still using it, so you can't just ignore it, right? Um, and I said, well, there's all this cool new stuff coming along, and I'm frustrated here, so I want to like apply what I know and how I design to some site that can teach people and tell them that, yeah, you can actually make that break from the past, and you can move on and start using CSS. And you know, one of the other factors, uh, and there's lots of factors, was that um, most of the demonstration sites for CSS at the time, they were just built by coders who don't necessarily have much of an aesthetic. So. They were minimal, they weren't great to look at, they were functional, but they weren't you know, highly designed sites. And I said, okay, CSS is capable of doing so much more. We just need to put it in the hands of the people who know how to create good design. And those people didn't generally code CSS, so we had to find some way to convince them to do that. So um, I thought a demonstration site would probably be a good way to go about it. I'd just done a contest prior to creating it that um, they didn't really do things right. It was like a contest to create CSS-based designs and skin a site. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, the prize incentive was great, but I think this needs to be more of a community thing where uh, people will continue participating. There's no like deadline; it will just keep going. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there, all, all these factors kind of came together into one site, and that's mm -hmm. that's how it came about. Yeah. Well, it's it's been incredibly effect, uh, effective. It was obviously, I mean, such a simple idea, such a basic oh, idea. It is. Stick it is. Up an HTML Any, anyone file. could have done it, you know. I'm not special. Right. I just happened to do it first. Yeah. Well, but it was genius. <laughs> it was a stroke <laughs> well, thank of you. genius. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so what's next? Um, well, what these you days, you know, I still do a lot of uh, consulting for clients. Um, hmm. I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing another book anytime soon. We'll see. You know, uh, we've been talking about potentially a second edition. Who knows if that'll materialize? Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm trying to get more into the role of doing rather than talking about stuff. So, uh, getting back into doing design work, uh, illustration is something I've been doing a little bit more of recently, and uh, just kind of tapping those creative urges that I've been um, maybe not not quite addressed when I've been doing more coding. So, I'm I'm getting more back into the design side of things, and it's really kind of exciting for me right now. That's great. Do you have a, a calendar of events or 
<laughs> uh, do you do you keep this information up on your blog or, or um, so people? I think you kind of have to know that. about the web design events to, to know where I'm going to be next. But I can tell you for <laughs> sure I'm going to be in New Orleans at the end of April for an event apart. So oh, fantastic! Uh, I will if, be there as well. There we go. I'll run into you again then. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks Excellent. for coming by. Thanks a lot, Robert. Enjoy South by Southwest. Thanks.